Hello everyone, good afternoon. Thank you for coming on our last uh, talk uh, of this same week. And we are so happy that all of you are here and also to the person that are connected via Zoom. So let me introduce you, Dr. Juan, Mani Juan Daniel Modine. Um, he is a researcher to work by using uncertainty quantification in greenhouse mathematical modeling. And uh, he received his bachelor's degree in industrial engineering at the National University of Colombia. And in that place, he also earned the master's degree and the PhD here, the, the degree here in Mexico, in Guanajuato, in the Central Investigation in Mathematics. Now he is going to talk us about Bayesian uncertainty quantification in greenhouse mathematical modeling. So please, we are going to welcome him. So hello everyone. Please let me check out my, my map. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, for me, it's an honor to participate of, of this extended week. Um, thank you so much, uh, Professor Lili and Professor Federica, for, for the invitation. So, uh, the work that I will present today uh, is a joint work that I have been doing with Dr. Andres Kirsten and Dr. Antonio Capella. So, let's go. The one I can. Yes, yes, I can see if you want, or would you like to change? Okay. Mm. If you want. Okay, then you can appear. Okay, thank you. Thanks, please. So, this is the presentation outline. Uh, first, I will talk about uncertainty quantification in ordinal differential equation. That is because the models that are used to represent the operation of greenhouses basically are all these systems. After that, I will talk about re, uh, the elements that must be taken into account uh, for the greenhouse mathematical modeling. Then I will talk about the inference procedure that we propose in the context of greenhouse mathematical modeling. And after that, I will talk, I will show you the, the inference results that we have for greenhouse climate and for the greenhouse production. And finally, I will talk about the main conclusions of this work. The next piece. So, uh, uh, all are used to represent phenomena in different areas of knowledge, such as engineering, uh, physics, biology, chemistry, and medicine and the use of the Bayesian statistical approach to quantify uncertainty in this type of phenomenon has spread widely in the recent years. And uh, these are some reviews of this topic to make uh, uncertainty quantification in the context of differential equations, phenomena that we can mobilize for with, with, with differential equations. The next piece. Okay, we consider a phenomenon represented by means of an uh, OD system. Uh, we assume that we have these observations taken in these times. And we assume that the observation has this structure where F, 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 F theta is the forward map that is solve the state variables of the system in time. And H is an observation functional that depends on how the observation are available. So the observation could be used uh, uh, some of the state variables or a combination, linear combination, for example, of the state variables. So that is the observation functional. And it's common, for example, that this, this is the error component. It's common that the, the error has normal distribution. So in that case, we have that the observation are a combination of the state variable plus a Gaussian nose, a normal nose or Gaussian nose. 
the next week. Okay, knowing the true value of theta, the parameter of theta, and the initial condition, solving the forward map as known as the direct problem. However, in this case, we, we, we objective is to make inference about the parameter uh, from observation. That is why we speak of an inverse problem. Uh, in the case where the error of each observation represents a TV Gaussian nose, we have that the likelihood function is this. And in this expression, we can see that every time that we want to evaluate the likelihood function, we must do so the forward map. And in, in general, uh, it's not possible to solve the forward map in an analytical way. So it's necessary to use uh, approximation with numerical methods. So we, we have a, a numerical version of the solve of, of the program map and a numerical version of the likelihood function. The next piece. If we consider this function as the prior of the uh, the prior distribution of the parameter theta, then the posterior distribution by the base terrain is defined as this. This is this expression. And uh, again, uh, generally, it's not possible to uh, find an analytical expression for this function. So we need to use some, some methods. And in this case, we, we use uh, Marcos Shea Monte Carlo methods or NCNC to calculate the posterior distribution or, or to generate value from this, this distribution. Uh, and this calculation in turn will be affected by the precision of the numerical method used to calculate the program map. In this reference, we can see some theoretical and practical consideration to make inference in this context. Okay, now I will talk about the, about the greenhouses, growing in greenhouses. This is the, the, main, the main application of this work. In a simplified way, a, a greenhouse is an enclosed space in which uh, plants are grown, where it's possible to control the climate conditions. It is wanted that these conditions are suitable for the development of plants. This is a high-tech uh, greenhouse, greenhouse uh, located in the Netherlands. And here we can see some of the elements that a greenhouse can have. So uh, the irrigation system, this is uh, through which the plants are supplied with water. The heating system, uh, this is, this is uh, really important, especially in the winter and at night. Uh, some greenhouses uh, can have an external source of CO2 that is for increase the crop production. In this case, we consider a crop of a cucumber. So, ah, something important is that the agglomerate of the leaves is known as the canopy. Yes. Okay, other elements of the, of the greenhouses are artificial light that is for simulate the solar radiation. Uh, other is the a thermal screen that is for insulate the temperature inside of the greenhouse and roof ventilation. That, that are windows that you can open that for lower the temperature. The next piece. So why is greenhouse mathematical model important? First, some advantages of growing in greenhouses uh, are uh, you can control the environmental conditions inside, uh, inside the greenhouse to reduce risk over the crop. Second, uh, there is a efficient use of land and water, and third, the crop is protected from external influence like wind, rain, low temperature, and pests. With the mathematical models, it, the greenhouse mathematical models is possible, uh, for example, in students and employees. That is, this model is possible to use as a, a pedagogical tool. For example, it's possible to evaluate policy uh, climate policy, control policies, or harvest criteria uh, with, without um, destructive tests or having to, to wait the entire cultivation time. 
Uh, as is possible with this model, evaluate technical characteristics in the design and or improvement of, of the greenhouse. That is, we can, for example, evaluate a new technology uh, before, uh, before the economy investment of this or that or, or this. Okay, it's possible to characterize the operation of a commercial greenhouse from three base models the greenhouse climate model, the photosynthesis model, and the growth model. Now I will talk about each of, of these models. The greenhouse climate model is an OD system that describes the dynamic in time of the main thermodynamic variables of the greenhouse. The most popular model used for this is a model, the model of Bantu. This is a model of a, a considerable say that is thinking to be used in different types of greenhouses. This model is composed of 17 state variables. Each of, the, each of these state variables has associated one of these. It also have, it has 14 control variables. The controls are for example, to lead off the artificial light or the hidden system. 12 inputs. The inputs are meteorolo meteorological variables, uh, solar radiation, uh, outside temperature, wind speed, uh, about 150 functional flows, and about 200 constant and or parameters. We propose a simplified version of the Bantu model. Uh, with four state variables, 10 control variables, 10 inputs, uh, 52 functional flows, and 87 constants. But the issues in proposing a new method, a new model, is that we must validate it. For example, this is the OD, uh, one OD of our simplified model. This is the OD of C1, the CO2 concentration in the air inside of the greenhouse. So we have that in proportion to the capacity of this air to store CO2, that is K4, C1 increased by the chain of CO2 from the direct air heater, that is O1, the external source of CO2, O2, and the fan and path system, O3, to the air inside of the greenhouse. And also C1 decreased due the, the change of the CO2 from the greenhouse air to the canopy and to the outside. Okay, now the photosynthesis model uh, describes how the assimilates, which are the plant's food, uh, are produced from the photosynthesis process. For this, it's important to consider that plants are divided into three types according to the way they make photosynthesis. The most popular type in our planet is C3. Some plants of this type are cucumber, tomato, potato, and rice. The second one most popular type in our planet is C4. And some plants of this, of this type uh, are corn and sugar cane. And the last one is cane. And some plants of, the, of this type are nopal, succulent, and cactus. Uh, we're interested in cucumber growing, so we consider the model, uh, the model, the model proposed by Fakuhar for plant C3. Uh, this model is composed of two variables, four inputs, 23 functions, and, uh, and 26 constant and or parameters. Okay, this is the main equation of the photosynthesis model, where A is the assimilation rate, AR is the assimilation by Rubisco. Rubisco is enzyme that accelerates the photosynthesis process. AF is the assimilation by far radiation. AACUN is the assimilation by accumulation of carbohydrates. And RD is the loss of assimilate by brief. So we must, we must calculate the, the amount of, of assimilate that we can produce given the available Rubisco, the available power radiation, and the available space. And we are limited to the minimum of these amounts. Also, we must subtract the assimilate necessary for the maintenance of the plant. 
That is the general idea of this, this equation. Next, please. Okay. Uh, for the growth model, we consider the model proposed by Marcellis. Uh, this represents a discrete dynamic system in which, for a cucumber uh, plant, every day uh, we consider the food that each fruit and the vegetary part of the plant consume. The current way of the growing fruits is made an evaluation of the fruit ready to be harvested, and we calculate the number of new fruits in the, in the crop. So, for example, uh, the way that the JTA is fruit on the plant gets every day is calculated with this expression. Uh, FJ is the strength with which the, the fruit takes food from the plant. FJ is a percentage. A is the rate of available assimilate, and DWF is the efficient efficiency with which the fruit transfer assimilates into dry matter. So we must calculate what percentage of the total food uh, the fruit uh, consumes, and we divide it by uh, insufficient to transform assimilates into dry matter. The percentage of the total food that the fruit consumes is calculated with this expression, and it depends on the potential growth rate of the fruit and uh, is respected by Kelly's maintained constant. Okay. Okay. The mathematical complexity of the base model is not high. However, some challenges in the numerical implementation of this model are first, uh, the considerable say of the greenhouse climate and photosynthesis model. Second, uh, there is an interaction between models that is, uh, state variables of the climate model and the photosynthesis model are inputs of the growth model. And third, advance at different time scales. The growth model advances or is sold daily, and the photosynthesis model and climate model uh, are sold uh, in minutes. Okay. Two. No, just one. Uh, okay, you okay. Okay, to face, this, uh, to face these challenges, we propose a programming environment called ModMod. ModMod, uh, that means modular modeling, is a programming environment that allows us to program and run a set of audi system in a modular way, regardless of where they are large system or that they interact with each other or that they advance on a different time scale. All the systems are sold using the root equipment methods. We consider uh, all the system with this structure, where kappa is the vector of proportionality constants, s are the state variables, i the inputs, u the controls, and theta the parameter. The third parameters and t the time. In the same way, we can spread this, this system in this way. Uh, here we are showing each of the questions. And these are the right, right hand side. This and this, and the right hand side. The next is. This is this is a structure of how but, but works. To each of this system, we assign a module. This module has the information of the tiny scale in which we hope that the system uh, will be solved. And to the model is connect each of the right hand sides of the system. And we done this for each of the OD systems. All of the models are connected to a principal model uh, called the director. And the director has the information in, of in which order the other modes will run, uh, the final time that, that we want to reach. 
and the director saves the record of all the state variables. Okay, the inference procedure uh, was based on the database presented in Hibian. These uh, are data from August to December 2018, that is 150 days from six independent greenhouses with identical technology located in the Netherlands. These data were generated in the, in the development of a contest in which uh, each of the groups participating has to control remotely a greenhouse, seeking to optimize production and make a good use of, of natural resource. Okay, in the inference procedure uh, was divided into two stage, climate model and growth model. In each state, an error model was proposed. Parameter calibration was performed from a database. The error model was validated from another database. E in all the case, the uncertainty of the parameters of variables of interest was quantified from Bayesian statistical approach. So I will talk about the inference procedure for the climate model. This is the error model that we propose. Is this? C2 is the greenhouse air temperature. B1 is the vapor pressure inside of the greenhouse air. And C1 is the CO2 concentration in the greenhouse air. This, the first column, this is the, this, these are the true values. And these are the values calculated by our simplified proposed model. Uh, so we are assuming that the true values are equal to the result, the result of the model plus a Gaussian noise. Uh, we're assuming that the noise, the errors are independent. So we have that the true values has normal distributions. And the reason why we are assuming independent between the errors is because uh, we found that as the, as the proposed model is based in the physics of the phenomenon, the model contains inside the dependence structure between the climate variables. The next piece. So that is the reason why you're assuming independence. Uh, we found that the inference should be repeated uh, every five weeks. That means that the parameters should be recalibrated. This is a consequence of working with a simplified model. But in the context of growing in greenhouses, five weeks is a long time. So how to recalibrate parameters is not a big problem. Um, the growth model receives as inputs the climate variables as slightly average. That is, we need a climate model that, that the least that we ask to the climate model is that he, give, uh, he delivers adequate daily average. We don't need that the climate model work well uh, minute by minute. A five week run of the climate model programming Python through mod mod takes around uh, two minutes. The next piece. Okay, if we have observation in these times, the likelihood function is this. Do you know what is a likelihood function? The likelihood function is the probability of, of have some observation given your error model. Uh, can you return please? <laughs> given this error model, you see the probability of has some observation with this model. This, that is the likelihood function. Continue, please. The probability of each of the variables uh, had some observation. That is the likelihood function. Okay. Uh, these are the parameters that we consider for main inference. These are uh, scale parameters, and these are three parameters that we found uh, has important influence in the variability of the model. Next, please. Uh, in Australia, we recall in the, the OD equation of C1. In this equation, you can see that the function K4 divided all the flows, and K4 is equal to phi two. So 
we can see the, the influence, the, the influence of this parameter over the dynamics of this variable. Next, please. Okay, alpha one, phi two, and C two are positive quantities. So we assign uh, we assign gamma distribution as prior for them. And for the scale parameter, we assign inverse gamma distribution. Assuming independence between the parameters, we have that the joint product distribution is equal to the product between the marginal priors. And by the base terrain, we have that the posterior distribution that is formed. That is, the posterior distribution is proportional to the product between the likelihood function and the prior distribution. And we use this expression to generate this expression, this, to generate values from the posterior distribution via NCNC method. Okay, the inference procedure for the climate model was divided into two stages, calibration and validation. In calibration, we took one database, uh, we made, uh, and from three days data, we make a parameter calibration via inference. The distribution then we predict the climate variables and calculated the, their uncertainty for five weeks. And this was repeated two times sequentially. In the validation state, we uh, from the inputs of another database randomly chosen and the posterior distribution of thing in the calibration state, uh, sequentially, we predict the climate variables and calculate their uncertainty. These are the calibration results for T2, the greenhouse air temperature. Uh, on the left, in orange, an example solution calculated used to the posterior mean, and in black, the true data. We can see in this graph that almost all the time, the simulated values, the orange, the orange line, uh, are very close to the true data. And on the right, the uncertainty of the solution but by simulating from the posterior predictive distribution of T2. Blue shadows are the 10% to 90% quantiles and 25% to 75% quantiles. And the red line is the median. In this graph, we can see that almost all the time, the true data, the black line, is inside of the credibility region. The next piece. These are the calibration results for B1, the vapor pressure inside of the air of the greenhouses. Greenhouse. Uh, this result also were, uh, were okay, but the model has some trouble detecting pits. This is here. The real data, the, the model has problem to detect in these pits. Here, we can see here, and we can see sit here. Uh, these are out of the credibility region. The next piece. These are the calibration results for C1, uh, C1, the CO2 concentration in the greenhouse air. The result also were okay, but again, the model had so trouble uh, detecting pits. We, we see here and we see here. Next, please. Uh, these are the validation results for T2. They were okay. Next, please. These are the validation results for B1. They were okay. And the next list. And the validation results for C1, they also were okay. Next, please. Okay, now I will talk about the inference procedure for the growth model, the growth, the growth model. Uh, in this case, the inference uh, is based in two variables associated with the production. That is NK the average number of fruit harvested on the day K in one square meter of the greenhouse, and HK, the average total weight of the fruit harvested uh, that day. We assume that NK has gamma distribution with mean equal to the model result, that is this, NK. If, if the signal to noise ratio is set to four, it's possible to find the values of the parameters, alpha K and beta K. A signal to noise ratio of four is equivalent to a coefficient of variation of one quarter that represents a, moder a moderate variability. That is done because uh, the model considered for the growth model is already validated. Validated. 
So we we hope that we, we expected that the true value is close, will be close to the result of the model. We hope this will be close to this. Okay, furthermore, uh, we assume that HK given NK, so the, the total weight of the fruit harvested, given the number of fruit harvested, has a normal distribution with these parameters. Uh, this is the scale parameter associated with variance of the, of the variable. And uh, this is important to say that the acceptable range for a fruit harvested, for a cucumber, is between 360 and 400 grams. So 380 is the midpoint of that acceptable range. The next, please. Uh, the climatic and photosynthesis inputs required by the growth model were simulated from the proposed model, the simplified climate model and the photosynthesis model of Pakuha. A 115-day run, that is the total day for which data is available of the growth model, programming Python through mod mod takes about two minutes. Okay, uh, if we have these observations, and assuming independence of production between days, this is the likelihood function, and these are the parameters that we consider for make, make inference. This is the scale parameter, and these three are parameters associated with the fruit growth, Established empirically in the literature. For example, A and B uh, are associated with a linear relationship. They are the slope and the, the, the slope and the intercept of a line. And for estimate them, uh, only was used to measurements. Let's please. Uh, new A and B are positive quantities, so we assign gamma distribution as prior for them. And for the scale parameter, we assign inverse gamma distribution. And again, assuming independence between the parameters, we have that the joint product distribution is equal to the product between the marginal priors. Uh, by the base theorem, we have that the posterior distribution uh, is proportional to the product between the likelihood and the joint product distribution. And again, we use this expression to generate value from the posterior distribution via NCNC. Next, please. Uh, for the growth model, again, was considered the stage of calibration and validation. In calibration, uh, we, we took one database. Um, from 45 days, we made parameter calibration via inference. With the posterior distribution of fame, we predict the production variables and calculate their uncertainty. 45 days uh, can sound like a long time. But the first 22 days, uh, there are no harvested fruits. That is the reason why we need more days for make inference in this case. The, the, in the validation stage, from the inputs of another database and the posterior distribution of thing in calibration state, we predict the, the production variables and their uncertainty for 150 days. These are the calibration results for NF, the accumulated number of fruit harvested. In this graph, we can see that almost all the time, the simulated values, the orange line, uh, are close to the, to the true values. And in this graph, we can see that almost all the time, the true values are inside of the credibility region. The true data uh, are the dot line. The next, please. Uh, these are the calibration results for age, the accumulated weight of the fruit harvested. They also were okay. Next, please. These are the validation results for NF. In general, they were okay, but in this graph, we can see that there are more intervals where the true data are outside of the credibility region. Here, here, and here. But the credibility region is coherent because uh, it's not far from the true data. The next, please. And these are the validation results for age. In general, they, they were okay. 
So the conclusions are first, a simplified model is proposed for the climate condition of the greenhouse, seeking to achieve the objective of a parsimonious model. A parsimonious model is a compact model that gives us uh, all the information that is possible. Uh, this model uh, delivers adequate results in accordance with the needs of the grow, uh, growth model. Second, a programming environment, mod mod, was developed, which allows to face the challenges in the numerical implementation of greenhouse mathematical models. Third, by means of the proposed methodology, simulation of the production variables of a greenhouse close to, to reality are obtained. And the last one, the proposed methodology had the advantage compared uh, to tools that currently exist in the literature that it allows to quantify the uncertainty of the climate and production variables and of parameter of interest. This one is very important in the, costing, uh, in the context of growing food in greenhouses because generally when a producer has uh, have made a contract, they, uh, they must to predict the, the, the production. And the budgets and the budgets allow them a percentage of error, generally the 10%. So it's very important to the to the production, to the producer, uh, quantify the uncertainty of the production of the of the food. The next, please. These are the main reference that we use. And the next one. And thank you so much. Now we have some minutes for some questions. Do you have a question here in, in the audience? Something that you want to ask? I have a question. Oh, okay, perfect. So it's in two. Uh, yes, yeah, uh, why is... Sorry? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, why is time considered a different, a separate variable in Magma? Well, excuse me. Sorry, can, you what? The, can you repeat the question, please? Yes. Um, why is time considered a separate variable in Magma? Ah, do you say, uh, can, can yeah. you see the slide again, please? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just do that. <laughs> Let me. I, uh, Would you like to say? Yes. Do you say the, this Japan, this, this people? Do you say this? Huh? Yes. Uh, here we consider difference uh, of the system. So in this case, will be some for kind of model, other for the growth model, and other for the for synthesis model. This is the reason. You can consider different system, and we coordinate all of this with the director model. The director model say in what in what order the, the other model, the system will run. And uh, what, what is the finish, the final time that we want to reach, and uh, the director model saves all the information of the variables. This is the reason. So the what mod uh, let us work for the different system uh, considering the, the interaction and not one more, and the different time scale that each of the system advances. That solve your question? Yes, thank you. So you're welcome. Okay, do we have another question? Yes? For the climate model, do you believe there is a way of modeling peaks or those peaks are due to the world? For me, you have to hear to you. <laughs> so, can you repeat the question? Yes. Yeah. Um, so, louder. Do you believe that there is a way to model the peaks for the climate model, or those peaks are due to the randomness of weather? You say that if you can run the oh. if you can control, control the, the peaks of the, the peaks and the climate, for example. 
I mean, ah, if you can control them, or, okay. or if uh, it's because of the randomness of the of the climate. Okay, okay. So, um, you can use the climate model in, in two directions. One is, for example, that you say, I want to evaluate a hypothetical case, so I put some condition and see what happened. For example, if you have very, very heat, a uh, uh, high temperature, the crop, the plant don't, don't, don't grow. For example, that. And other case, that is our case, we want to reproduce the climate, the climate uh, similar to the real data, the true data. That is the other situation, but that you say it is very, very good option. So it means that when you are working in greenhouses, it's because you have more control, right? Yes. That, that. So you can control different things that are involved for uh, making the plants grow or not. Yes, that is true. Yeah, the, the, the reason why you want to worry. Okay. Yeah, because in general, when you are in an open place, you cannot control many things, right? Yes, for example, in a greenhouse, it's possible to uh, grow in, in winter, uh, grow, for example, continue growing in the night because the artificial light simulates the solar radiation. Then the, the plants continue to make, make food, make photo, uh, photosynthesis in the night. So you can produce more in, in, a, you, in a greenhouse, you comfort condition, and you can produce more. Okay. And what is your question? Uh, the formulas, the well, all the formulas are always exactly, or they have like a presentation of the like, like, like the formulas? Yes. I mean, the models, the mathematical models that you have, if they are precise or if you are considering that they can, they have some errors. Okay. Um... The question are exactly, but I say in the beginning that let me show you. We have this structure. We have, for example, climate model that depends on the forward map. The forward map is in the case of the climate model are the ordinary differential equation associated, associated with the thermodynamics of, of the climate. So we know the equation, for example, we know that this is one of the questions of the climate model, but to solve this, this model, but to solve this system, we use a numerical method. It's not possible to calculate the solution of this equation uh, by hand. It's not possible. By hand or analytical way, it's not possible. So we need a, a numerical approximation. And also, for main inference, let me, this is the posterior distribution, this. We use this function to make inference, and also it's not possible to calculate this, this function by hand. We need other, other, other numerical method called NCNC, Marco Shea Monte Carlo. So we have two points where it's necessary a, a numerical approximation. To uh, like predict uh, the climate damage that we are going to, to have in some years. Uh, some years ago, the scientists they say that we we have a irreversible irreversible yeah. damage, okay. irreversible damage of the earth because of climate uh, damage. And my question was, with those kind of formulas, mathematical formulas, can we predict that this and that is going to happen? Ah, in there, this is the plan. Yes. No, because, because this is a model for the climate of the greenhouse. It's as, as you take the greenhouse as a, as a box, 
and you only want to know what happened in Sayo Tampos. That is the reason. But it's no far. A model the climate in a greenhouse or model the climate in, a, in, the, in the air, in the planet. It's related. It's related. It's related. Yeah, it's more complex in, in the air, but it's similar. The, the thermodynamics is similar. Uh, uh, I'm a really uh, person that can touch and things. Um, so that's where it's going my question. Did you try to use this uh, mathematical model uh, in a real house? Did you have a chance of uh, uh, doing the um, field work also, applying the mathematical model? Uh, let me show you. Uh, we use this data, and these are data from our real greenhouses. Okay. So, so those ones are, are from a real greenhouse? Yes, located in the Netherlands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and did you try it then? Okay, so, so you need to collect the data to be able to do that. Can you not say use the model for another greenhouse? Ah, okay, very good question. Um, yes, it's possible, but I must have a or model to the, condi the specific condition of that greenhouse. Okay. And very important, the, the growth model, the model of the crop must be a specific. We work with cucumber, okay. but in the greenhouse, for example, work with tomato, work with flowers, we must change that model. Sure, but the model is, you can modify the model mm -hmm. depending on the greenhouse and the conditions, but the model is uh, working. Yes, 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 yes. In different kind. Yes, need the question, but it's possible to move to other greenhouses. Yes. That, that is amazing because uh, you can create a model that can be useful for different places, uh, given which one are the variables that need to be optimized for each of them. And so it cannot be applicable for other places. So it's, it's really interesting. Yeah, it is. Thank you. No, you're welcome. Okay, do you have more questions? No? Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you something. Uh, because regarding the question that Dr. Kati was asking you, um, do you think that it could be possible if maybe, I don't know, let's imagine or let's think that in our university wants to work with you maybe, but not just, I mean, you are doing the, the thing um, that a mathematician is doing. But maybe here we have some biotech uh, person, maybe they can work creating the real greenhouse, maybe, I, mean, mm -hmm. I am dreaming, I don't know if that is possible, but the, do you think it would be possible if one of our students wants to work with you or wants to take this challenge for our university to contact you? Of course, of course, yes, yes, yes it's possible. There were all really models in a specific greenhouse, I don't know, shed some hypothesis, I don't know, but yes, yes, of course. Okay, very yes, good, yes. then if you are, maybe if you are interested in that, Maybe you can ask and maybe we can arrange. But, you know, it, it will be amazing uh, because they have uh, done the, the, the work regarding the mathematical modeling. Here until now, it's maybe theoretical, but if we have actually a greenhouse, let's say here in the university, that will be amazing to have results by applying these models and getting the actual, uh, the real data, not just from the Netherlands, but just from here, you know, that will be amazing. So yes, I think that that will be very a very interesting uh, project if you are interested in. So I think that will be yes. that will be uh, great, right? I agree. This is my email, the first one, Juan Punto Molina. <laughs> this is my email. Any if you want to write to me, ask anything, you, you are free to, to write to me. Fantastic. Yeah. So um, I think that's all. So we are going to uh, thank you, Dr. Molina again. Thank you so much. We are sharing with you uh, your participation, ah, your certificate of participation. You. So thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much. Okay, so I don't know uh, what is next.
What is next is uh, we will be waiting uh, for the Tahores to come and we're going to have the closing now, uh, I think in five minutes more or less, uh, and we can stop uh, this uh, oh, okay. um, presentation at the moment. Um.